May our prayers come before you, O God. Let's start over. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from Genesis, the second chapter. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Here ends the reading. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and suitable in your sight, O God, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. So as this year began, I started each day with devotions from a book called Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints. It's an illustrated children's storybook featuring the stories of people of diverse faiths who worked for more love and justice in their corner of the world, even when that meant rocking the religious boat. These are people from different religions and time periods who spoke truth to power and did the right thing even when it was the hard thing. These are not perfect people, but they are people we can glimpse the holy through. This book is written by Deneen Akers, a writer, producer, teacher, and mother who believes deeply in the power of stories. Her past projects have explored faith, identity, and belonging. She is the mother of two children who are the true inspiration for the book. Every once in a while, she sends out emails with devotions and updates. While I was on vacation last week, she sent out one of those emails. My mom said to me, did you read Deneen's email today? It's pertinent, especially for you. And at that point, I hadn't read it. And I said, no, mom, I haven't read it yet. And of course, she asked later in the day, have you read the email yet? So the next morning, as I was sitting on the dock next to my sister, who was reading her book, and I was watching the sun come up and just warm the lake around us, I read the email. I wanted to share part of that email with you because it helped shape my morning time upon returning from vacation. The subject of Deneen's email was, Why I charge my phone in our scary basement now. I know, it sounds intriguing, right? Her email begins as she openly reflects about the challenges, worries, and anxieties that she and so many others are facing as decisions are made about what shape school will take in the fall. Deneen writes, No matter the type of school situation ahead, we parents and teachers and pastors and caring adults have a valuable chance to teach children to adjust to the curveballs life inevitably will throw at all of us. This is something they will remember, and they'll remember people coming together to face a hard thing. They will pick up on most of our anxieties, our fears, our disappointments. That doesn't mean we have to hide those feelings. They are real and valid. However, we do need to model processing them, letting go of what we can't control, finding practices that can help calm and center us, and joining in with others to help do our part. That's holy troublemaking in this moment. Deneen continues and explains why I charge my phone in our scary basement now. She says, I keep finding again and again that if I can find my center, my well, then my children do infinitely better. For me, that has meant charging my phone in our finished scary basement at night. And when I say scary, I mean that we found a rat snake down there about this time last year. And even though we have safely moved said reptile outside, I've not ventured down there unless I ever have to since. And then with shoes on and a great deal of caution. But leaving my phone charging at night in a place where I don't really want to venture keeps me from doing the doom scrolling or obsessive news checking first thing in the morning. My husband and I take turns getting solo time every other day. He bikes, I walk our dog. I absolutely adore the first sip of coffee and watching the sunrise move over the mountains. And I've been reading Mary Oliver's poetry as a devotion. I have to tell you, I love this. 
all of it, except for the rat snake in the basement part, because that's kind of gross. But I love the truth that those around us, especially the younger ones around us, are watching as we act and we react to situations that change every single stinking day. And as we act and we react, we don't need to be perfect in how we do that, but we need to be true to ourselves and true to others around us. It's okay to be frustrated as we move from plan A to plan B and to plan C, D, and E, and we may even get to plan Q. I, hopefully not, but we might. But as we do, we do so with grace and with deep breaths, centered in Christ, knowing that the Holy Spirit is guiding us as we continue to live and learn in COVID times. The other part I love about this email is the importance of centering ourselves. I cannot thank you, the people of Trinity, enough and the awesome, well-oiled machine of staff that hangs around here and gets work done all the time. Because you all, they all, have continued to preach and to teach and to reach out and to care for you all while I had the opportunity to get away. That time away gave me a chance to rest. It gave me time for holy rest. It helped fill my well. It helped me find my center. It gave me time with family. Helped me get almost 20 mosquito bites. Helped me read an entire Captain Underpants book with my nephew. Scratch my legs climbing up rocks to get in and out of the lake. I had time to run, to swim, to laugh, to breathe, to nap, to paddleboard, to do puzzles, to be with family, and to just be. Centered in that time away when I returned, I realized I could do a reset. I could start my days fresh with a book instead of scrolling on my phone. I could start my day with a prayer practice that involves turning pages and not looking at my phone. I could start my days new again. Don't worry, there's still coffee, just no screen time until after my daily run. Sure, you can restart any time, but for me, vacation opened that door to a new beginning. Not being on my phone first thing in the morning is a gift that I've given to myself. I've done it three days in a row, and it is good. How might you be yearning for a restart? What change might you make in your day tomorrow just because it's August 20th? What can you do that will help you be centered for the day? Just pick one thing. Start tomorrow. I pray that as the world keeps spinning, you find time for rest. It's a holy thing, rest. And in that rest, you discover or you rediscover a way to center yourself each day, be it yoga, a cup of coffee on your own, a walk around the block, a certain downtime from any and all technology. Whatever it may be, know that it is a holy practice that will shape your actions and your reactions as the days continue to unfold around you. And now may the peace which passes all understanding Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, and let all God's people say, Amen.